Hi, welcome to this new tutorial explaining the full workflow of 360 degree video production. The first important thing to know is camera setup. For the Hero 4, in video mode, press on the left side button to access the settings. Press on mode to browse the menus and on the shutter button to change the value. The recommended resolution is 1440p with 60fps. The frame rate is really important because the more frames you have, the better the synchronization will be. A wide field of view and a 4x3 mode are mandatory to capture the entire 360 sphere. Low light is disabled and set the spot meter to off. Enable ProTune mode to have access to the advanced settings. Then set the white balance to native and the colour to flat in order to get the closest possible colour balance between the cameras. The ISO limit is up to you, but we recommend you set it as low as possible to avoid noisy images. For outdoor shots, ISO 400 is enough. Set the sharpness to low. For the Hero 3 Plus, press Mode until you're on Settings, click on the red button to enter, click again to change the resolution. Since a minimum FPS is needed, we choose 1440p image resolution at 48fps. For the other settings, it's the same thing. Set to wide mode, low light off. Go to capture settings, verify that spot meter is off. Enable ProTune. Set the white balance to cam raw. Color to flat, eyes a limit according to your scene, and sharpness to low. Remember that all the cameras composing a rig must use the exact same settings. Put your GoPros on the rig, switch them on manually or using the GoPro remote and start recording. To synchronize your video afterwards, you need to produce a synchronization signal. It can be loud and clear audio clap or a rotation of the rig around its center. To be sure your footage will be able to synchronize, it is highly recommended to do both synchronization signals at the beginning and the end of the shooting. Now we have six videos, which I can drag into Autopano Video. The interface is divided into two windows, here are the input videos and here are the timeline. The first thing to do is to synchronize the videos using the audio signal or rotation movement. We'll move the position to two minutes and click on Synchro in the toolbar. A third window will appear with the synchronization settings. We'll leave the value at 20. It will search 20 seconds before and 20 seconds after the current time. In this case, we're going to use motion to synchronize because the sound in these videos is only wind. As you can see, the detection works and the videos are synchronized. Click on Apply to update the time position of the input videos. You can update the synchronization at any moment in your project if it's not perfect. Don't forget to save often and make different versions of your project because there is no undo. Then we'll stitch the videos. Click on Stitch in the toolbar to open the corresponding window. This stitch uses a selection. The selection is the blue bar above your timeline. Then you just need to choose a number of positions to use in the selection and start stitching. Note that 5 is a good compromise between computing time and stitching quality. For complicated cases, like underwater, you can increase this value. Once the stitching is done, the preview window shows up, displaying the output result. You can see that the timeline has split into four different lines, allowing you to adjust different settings over time, independently. The red bar represents the render section, the part of the video that will be rendered at the end. 
We will set the input time at 1 minute and the output at 2 minutes. As you can see, the horizon is pretty messed up, and as the camera isn't static, we need to adjust the horizon over time. To do so, click on Stab, and then on Compute Stabilization. This tool affects the horizon timeline only for the selection. Once the computation is finished, we can adjust the compensation level. Set the value to your convenience depending on how much of the motion of the video you want to get rid of. In this case, we use 50% to make the video more immersive. Stabilization at 100% will make your video almost static without rotation. Then, a manual pass is also needed to perfectly straighten the horizon and adjust the direction of your 360 video. We can set the quality of the preview and activate a grid to set the horizon easily. Before that, be sure to activate the Auto Cut mode. Go to Preferences, Edition tab, and then check Auto Cut Transitions, which will automatically create a state each time you change the horizon during a transition. We start with the beginning of the video. In this case, we use the center of the sail as a reference for the direction, and we straighten the horizon by moving the panorama in the preview. Click on Apply, or use the A key on your keyboard to apply changes. Then we use the Cutter tool to create a transition from the beginning to the end of your sequence. Now we can do the same adjustment to the final state. As our video has a lot of movement, we will continue to adjust the horizon in the rest of the sequence to get the perfect 360 video. Start by the middle, then the middle of the first half, and so on until the centre of the video is always in the direction that you want and the horizon is perfectly straight. After that, we need to work on the colour balance between the different cameras. One of the new features of Autopano Video 2.2 is the automatic colour correction. Adjust your selection and open the colour tool. Then you can choose which settings to adjust. Most of the time it will just be the exposure, colours and vignetting. Before launching the automatic colour correction, you have to choose how often you want to apply a correction. We chose to do it every 5 seconds here, but you can set it to every 2 or 10 seconds, depending on the speed of the light changes in your scene. Once calculated, you can still adjust the exposure compensation if you think it's too dark or too bright. Before rendering your 360 video, there is one last step. Choosing your blend settings. There is the smooth mode, which is made for moving subjects, such as sports, and the sharp mode, better for static shots. You'll have to test both different modes and choose the best one for your project. Your video is now ready. Click on Render. You can change the resolution, the output type, MP4, uncompressed, or frames for an image sequence. Most of the time we use MP4 with the 4K UHD preset. You can choose the best audio source of your six cameras and render. Once you have your panoramic video, you can watch it in an HMD or watch it on a 360 player like Colorize and even upload it on Colorize Hosting and share it with your friends. You can change the resolution up to 4K, set the projection to Little Planet and explore new ways to see the world.
Now, you might think, but what if I want a video directly in Little Planet? This is absolutely possible and very simple. We were in the stitching tab of the timeline, now we will switch to the authoring tab. We can see there are only two timelines in this one, one for orientation of the camera and one for the style of projection, like Fisheye or Little Planet. Here we have the different projections. I choose Little Planet and the ratio format, 16 by 9 for most cases. If you want to adjust the projection and the camera orientation at the same time, you need to make the same cuts in both timelines. We will zoom first Then we will change to a fisheye view. Then just change the projection to go back to Little Planet. By right clicking on a transition, you can edit it. In the transition window, choose the type of interpolation that you want to apply. Bounce in will look like the video bounces before movement. For the second, we'll use smooth to have a smooth movement in input and output. and a transition quick smooth which is a bit more aggressive than smooth. We can now export our video. Full HD is sufficient for an authored sequence. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Coming up is the kind of result you can get. Enjoy!